presence of God. Um, I want to bless the men and women of this house if we can applaud them tonight. Thank you for having me. I want to bless my parents. Thank you for coming to be my sister. You know, and my side. Um, it's, it's truly an honor to be here for, to be able to share my testimony because the enemy convinced me that I would never become free. Yeah. And there's some of you in here that I have to have a struggle, and the enemy has told you too that you would never come out. But I'm here to declare that the devil is a liar. So if you will please listen attentively as I share my story. Amen. That's all right. And the title of my testimony is Destined for Greatness. Have you ever felt thank you? <laughs> have you ever felt that if you could have anyone wish that you would go back and change this or go back and change that? Well, I myself used to feel this way, but that was before I came into an understanding of what Paul was really saying in Romans 8 and 28, which is all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are called according to his purpose. So what this means to me is that no matter what mistakes I make or how many times I have messed up, God will take the very things that Satan has designed to kill me or use against me or even disqualify me and allow it to work for me. Y'all are too quiet in the house. See, I was one that many had counted out. I grew up always getting in trouble in school and I dealt with rejection at a very young age which lingered into my adulthood. I was told as a child that I was behaviorally dysfunctional and was prescribed medication that was supposed to help me overcome in this area. However, what the medication known as Ritalin did was make me feel paranoid or even as if I was crazy. I remember always getting into fights with people and t people tended not to like me for whatever reason and I always felt the need to have to defend myself or I was often misunderstood. I was no fighter, but I was never afraid to fight. I believe this is what scared my mother the most, the fact that I never seemed to be afraid of anything or anyone. I also grew up without my father being, with my father being in and out of my life. Let me slow down, God is saying slow down. That's all right, let me use you. Now this had a greater effect on me than anything else that took place in my life, because the truth is I needed my father there to protect me, to guide me, and provide that fatherly love that every daughter longs for and deserves. On top of that, I was dealing with various things within my home, watching my mother dwell in abusive relationships, being physically abused by my stepfather at the same time, and it only made me act out even the more in school. See, when we see people struggling or acting out, as we like to call it, we must always remember there is a why behind the what. If you see an angry person, there is a reason why they are the way they are. If you see a person that appears to be a loner, there's a reason why they are the way they are. If you see a person that appears to be confrontational, then guess what? You got it. There's a reason why they are the way they are. Amen. Which leads me to the next phase of my life. Due to the absence of my father, I, like many other young women today, began to look for love in all the wrong places. I ended up pregnant and had no idea I was going to raise a child with the many issues I had. I remember not wanting a baby, I, but I was 17 and allowed my then 21 year old boyfriend to convince me that we would be the perfect family and that we would always be together. Sure. Well, that lasted no longer than a minute because three months after my daughter was born, we parted ways and I was left to figure out what I was going to do. Now please don't misinterpret what I'm saying. I, was, I said he left my side for he never left my daughter's life, but at the end of the day, for us raising, our daughter in a separate home was very stressful and also having to deal with the fact that we would no longer be together truly hurt me. Uh -huh. yes, it does. By this time, I had seen more men leave than stay, so I was determined to never fall in love with another man and I didn't. See, it is important to deal with the hurt you feel and allow the Lord to heal you for hurt people hurt people and hurt begots more hurt. So healing is vital in order to move on from anything that has happened in your life. Yeah, so not so not only, so not long, excuse me, so not long after my daughter's father and I split, I began to have multiple sex partners. See, that ain't none of y'all in here. Y'all have been with one person and that's it, that's all you know, but that's not my story. And I gotta keep it real, as the man of God said. And I did many degrading things, which some of you are still doing today, but we can come in with our soups. 
Dressed, looking dignified as if we never had a struggle in our flesh. But I stand today being transparent for that which I came in order to help someone that may be struggling to encourage them that there is hope in every situation that I have to be hopeless. See, my testimony is not cute, neither one that I share loosely, but I choose to believe I've encountered all these things to be a mouthpiece for Jesus. Amen. To help pull others out and help bring them from the pit to the palace of God. See, all I wanted... All I wanted during that time was to be loved and accepted for who I was, but I didn't have any standards, so I ended up being used, abused, not feeling pretty, and wanted to kill myself. Sad to say, but my situation got worse. to homosexuality. Now, I wasn't just riding down the street one day and a female found me attracted and just lured me in. No, no, no. See, Satan strategically and patiently planned this setup in which was successful for a season. See, I was hanging around a relative of mine in which her cousin was a lesbian and three of us ended up hanging out together every day. See, touch your neighbor and say bad choice. Bad choice. See, you gotta watch who you hang around, who you can take to all your right to connect yourself if it ain't a God. choices. And although I had grew up in church and I felt I had some idea of um, who God was, but the truth of the matter is I could I wasn't mature enough to hear him. Um Amen. Amen. Okay. Ooh, I see how Juanita Bottom felt when she had to first reveal herself. Because it's not a it's not a a, a, it's not a comfortable feeling to, 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 to tell about your, your secrets or to expose yourself so other people can become free. And people may look at you like you're crazy, but I have to tell it like it is. See, see, Satan is very wise, and many believers underestimate him as well as his ability. True, he can do no more than what the Lord allows, but also if we are not walking in a manner of being led by the Holy Spirit, then we open up a door to be deceived. Satan waited until I was at a low point and ended up having a mini break breakdown and was hurt by the guy I was currently dating and used this female to approach me. Of course, I was comfortable with her because we were hanging out every day, so using someone I was familiar with was definitely a part of the setup. Long story short, I ended up entertaining the spirit of homosexuality and residing in that lifestyle for five long years. During that time, I almost lost the custody of my daughter. Drama became my middle name because anyone who has experienced this lifestyle knows that peaceful moments are very rare. I allowed Satan to deceive me into thinking that being with the woman could be better for women. We are naturally caring and loving, and that's what I long for. Little did I know this was a lie. Being on the other side was actually worse than any other experience I've had in my life. Yeah. I'm sharing all of this with you on today to empower you, to elevate your thinking, right. and cause you to choose Jesus wholeheartedly on today. Oh, yeah. Sure, many of us are professing salvation with our lips, but is it evident in our lifestyle? See, one thing I've learned in the process of transformation is that when God showed up against the deal with you, you have to let some folk go. See, in order for me to get delivered from homosexuality, I had to lose myself from some folk. I had to change my number. I had to change my routine. I had to embrace you from my side of being. And like William McDowell said, I had to completely give myself away. Amen. That's there right. is no other way that I can tell you how I got free other than letting go of everything That's and embrace Jesus alone. See, I, see, letting go can hurt, but it's very necessary. See, many people today are hindered in their walk with the Lord because they keep trying to hang on to this one or hang on to that That's one. But in right. reality, we need to be hanging on to Jesus. That's see, right. what I've learned about Jesus That's is he right. is never changing. See, folk will love you today, hate you tomorrow without even having a valid reason. Folk will talk about you when they see you struggle, or even sometimes our friends will patty-cake us while in our mess, but when the truth be told, we need real friends that will tell us the truth and help get us to a greater level of accountability. My primary purpose of sharing my testimony with you on today is simply to show you what God can do. Anyone that knows the spirit of homosexuality and drug addiction are two of the most difficult Huh. The most difficult to break. But with God, all things are possible. And nothing is impossible for him. So if you find yourself struggling, 